Welcome to Prince of Peace. We've got a little different setting for our worship today. We are so glad that you are with us. I'm Pastor Ken, and this would be a great time to invite someone to come along and to worship with you. Send them a quick text or an email or hit that share button and just invite them to worship with you. In fact, if there's someone you know who maybe has not been worshiping for a little while, ask them if they've heard the messages and invite them to come on back. As we worship today, we want to remember that Eric Erkin is going to be sharing his children's message that you can follow at this link. At the same time, Eric is going to be a special guest in our service today with a blessing at the beginning of the school year for all students, parents, teachers, anyone involved in the education process. So look forward to that as he encourages us to let our light shine. And as we continue hearing from Jesus and talking about matters of faith today, we look at what it means to be bold, courageous, and fearless in approaching Jesus who loves us so dearly. God's blessings on your worship today.
We're continuing this sermon series where we're listening or we're hearing from Jesus and we're asking ourselves the question, how does that transform our lives? How does that move us into new directions? And how does that increase our faith? And as we talk about matters of faith, it's not just a matter of, well, yes, I believe this. It's not just head knowledge, but we're talking about how does that faith impact our lives and move us forward in order to serve God? And how do our lives get transformed by his power as we listen to Jesus? We're looking at several passages during this time from the Gospel of St. Matthew. And today we look at Matthew chapter 15, where Jesus meets a woman who is a Canaanite woman. I'm going to read it to you. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came out to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. She keeps crying out after us. So Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Then the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. And he replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But it is, Lord, she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. As we see this encounter, Jesus with this Canaanite woman, we get to see how Jesus interacts with people. And well, quite frankly, as Jesus has gone away from the crowds and this woman has come up to him, should be noted that as a Canaanite woman, if you understand the context, for over a thousand years, there has been hatred between those who are children of Abraham, Jewish, and those who are Canaanite. And so as this woman comes to Jesus, she's an outsider. She has a great need. And notice how she calls out to Jesus even as an outsider, as someone who shouldn't know about Jesus being the Messiah, she calls out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. She recognizes Jesus for who he is, the Messiah, the son of God who was to come into the world, the one who comes to set things right, the one who comes to forgive and to heal and to give life. And she explains, my daughter, she's demon possessed and suffering terribly. She's oppressed by a demon. What's interesting is how Jesus doesn't answer a word. That kind of caught me off guard when I read this again. It's not like Jesus to ignore anybody. And he's not ignoring her. Remember, Jesus is the teacher, the rabbi, the master teacher. And sometimes a teacher needs to sit patiently to allow everybody in the room, or in this case, everybody who are gathered around him to process just a little bit. Did you notice? She doesn't give up just because Jesus is silent. Or maybe to some, it might seem like, He doesn't care. She continues to cry out. So much so that the disciples come to Jesus and they urge him, send her away, please. She keeps crying after us. One thing I want to say about the disciples. Remember, there's deep, generational, thousand years worth of hatred. Because when the children of Israel went into the land of Canaan, they were to drive out the people 
And so there was animosity. Even in the New Testament, we see that there's animosity, division between those who identify as Jewish and those who are outsiders, Gentiles. And so I have a hunch that the disciples, are they simply saying to Jesus, she's annoying us? Or could there be a subtext there? Somehow that the disciples are saying, this this type of people, these people, you know you're in trouble when you start saying those people, these people. These people, they don't, they don't belong bothering Jesus. And although Jesus says what he says next, he doesn't buy into his disciples' bias. He states something that he clearly stated throughout his ministry. My purpose here, I've come for the lost sheep of Israel. His purpose, his ministry was to the people in Palestine. It was from there, after Jesus rose again and ascended into heaven, that his disciples would take the word of God and carry the light of Christ from Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So he says, I've come only for the lost sheep of Israel. And that woman kneels before him. It's an act of worship. And she pleads, Lord, help me. I want to point out this woman isn't just crying out to Jesus in desperation. As I said earlier, she recognizes him for who he is. She knows that he has the power to help. And so Jesus says this. I love this phrase, this statement that he makes. I love it maybe because I'm a dog lover. He says, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. You know, sometimes when Jesus says something that seems a little off, it's an invitation for someone to step out in their faith. Sometimes when he's silent, it's an invitation for us to step out in faith, to trust that he has the power and that out of his love, he cares for us. And so she says, It is, Lord, for even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She's identifying Jesus as her master and Lord. Only two times in scripture does Jesus say this. You have great faith. Only two places is it recorded or two events One was when the centurion, a Roman soldier, came to Jesus and was asking for Jesus to heal his servant. And also here, when Jesus says to this outsider, this Canaanite woman, you have great faith. If you were with us last week, you heard how Jesus said to Peter, when Peter sunk like a rock in the water, when Jesus had said, come on out of the boat, He said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? To this outsider, he says, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And at that moment, her daughter's healed. There's a couple of things I want to talk about here today based on this scripture. First of all, I want to invite you along with me to just pause and think for a second. How do we see people? How do we look at people? How do we understand people, people who are different from us? You know, this is a a time in our country that we're wrestling with issues of social justice, wrestling perhaps, I hope, with where we might have some bias or inherent bias. And I certainly believe Jesus' disciples, the fact that she was a Canaanite woman, one of those people, was the reason that the disciples wanted her away. Not to mention the fact that she was bugging them. In what way does Jesus call us to evaluate our bias? Look at what Jesus does. Just as he did not buy into the bias of his disciples, he recognized that woman for exactly who she was. Child of God. 
for whom Jesus would give his life, for whom Jesus would gladly go to the cross, bear her sins. And yet he doesn't even just say, well, you wait for that, it's coming. He says to her, your child's healed. In what ways can we evaluate our lives and recognize people for just who they are? as children of God, created by God the Father, redeemed by the Son, and for whom the Spirit desires to draw into his kingdom. And then I want to ask this. The title of this message is A Bold Faith. Actually, as I read through it, I thought to myself, maybe I should have changed that. Maybe a bold faith isn't right. Maybe maybe a, a courageous faith. I think it was courageous faith. Maybe fearless faith. I like the alliteration. And uh, those who are watching me tape this will tell you, didn't you say courageous faith on that piece of paper? Fearless faith. Even though she could have wilted, she has no business, no right being there. This is true. That part, in a way, the disciples got right. She has no business being there. Just as you and I have no business coming into God's presence, which we're doing today as we worship in our own homes or wherever we might be. We have no business. And yet Jesus invites us to come. And he desires to see our faith, not just exhibited in a private way, but but that we would take steps of faith. Do you have a faith that moves you fearlessly, courageously, boldly to approach Jesus. God's word says that because of his sacrifice on the cross for us and his resurrection, the gift of his grace, his love, his peace, and his power, we can approach the throne of grace with confidence. And so let's do that. What is it that you want to ask God for today? If you could ask him for one miracle, what would that be? I think sometimes we're hesitant to ask. Have you ever seen somebody who has some sort of need, maybe a family member, maybe a friend, and they're like, I don't want to be a burden to you. Just don't worry about it. Do you ever think that about God? I don't want to burden him with this. Quite frankly, he's already carrying the load. It's no burden. Or do you think to yourself, you know, I've I've not been good enough. I've not done enough of the right things to approach him. Jesus says, have courage, have faith. For I have done, he says, all that is needful for you to be in my kingdom and to approach me whether it's a prayer that God would just cancel the pandemic. Remember, sometimes Jesus waits so that our faith can stretch and exercise. Or maybe the prayer is Jesus. Help me understand how this pandemic shapes my life and how I can help others throughout it. How I can be praying for others or encouraging others or sending messages or texts or phone calls to others so that they might be encouraged in their faith. You see, even though we have no business approaching the throne of grace, Jesus has opened the door wide and he invites us to come through, to kneel before him, to call out to him, the Messiah, Jesus, son of David, and to speak fearlessly. And he listens He cares, and he has power to touch the lives of you and me and change the world. In Jesus' name, amen. So we confess our sins. I want you to be thinking about how is it that God desires to be changing your life and what from that message kind of sticks in your mind. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace with confidence. And yet we know that we are not worthy to be here. 
We came into this world in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. So we throw ourselves before you for your mercy. And we ask that the, the love, the sacrifice, the peace and the power of Jesus would plead for us. For it is only on the basis of what he has done do we approach you. And we thank you, Lord, for even though we can think of ways that we have sinned against you and what we've thought, what we've said, what we've done, or in things that we ought to have done to serve others and show your love that we failed to do, we know that you are merciful and forgiving. And so we come to you knowing that you will grant us peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God's word says that he has removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. And that he loves us so greatly. And so I announce to you the complete forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning. This morning, we're going to be doing things a little differently than I would have liked. The plan would have been to do something that I have done before, but that would involve us meeting in person. At the beginning of each school year, what I like to do is to invite all of the children forward. And then after the children come forward into a center aisle, then anyone who works in a school, a teacher, a teacher's aide, a cook, secretarial staff, anybody who works in a school. And then after they come forward, I would invite the congregation to come forward and everyone would grab the shoulder of the person in front of them and we would pray over our children and our school staff that they would be blessed and be a blessing to the schools in which they serve. Well, that's not possible right now with the coronavirus, but we are still sending school children and school staff into the world. It looks different. Some of you are returning in person. Some of you are returning virtually, but you are returning to school and you are returning with Jesus, who is the light of the world. We start every chapel here at Prince of Peace, Prince of A Day Pause by lighting this candle. And as we do it, we ask the children, why do we light this candle? And the children all call out, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is still the light of this world that is different. And he is the light of the world at your school, not just at your church, not just at home. He is the light of the world at your school. And he has called you to bring his light, the light that lives inside of you. He said, go and let your light shine. That, that that light is Jesus. And so when you are kind to a classmate, respectful to a teacher, when you are forgiving, when you are merciful, what you are doing is you're bringing Jesus's light to your corner of the world. And we want to pray a blessing upon you as you do that. And so as you learn, as you love, as you forgive, May you be safe. May you share that love. And as you share that love, if you, you have a friend and they, they don't go to church, invite them to, to watch church with you. If they don't have a Bible, let me know. I'll make sure you get one that you can give to them. All right? But we are called to be the light. We are called to bring Jesus as a light into the world, to let our light shine. And may you do that boldly this school year. May you be safe and learn a lot and be the light. Amen. Jesus, friend of sinners, we have strayed so far away. Reach with open hearts and doors. 
Please join me for prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us a boldness, a great faith that has great expectations where we approach you with confidence, confidence in your love and your power. Remind us of your your sacrifice, Lord Jesus, and all that you have done for us and strengthen us so that we might serve others and show the same love to others that you have shown to us. We pray for many people who have asked us to pray for them, for their needs. We ask that you would surround Terry and her daughter, Rochelle, with your love and peace. Also be with Joe and Laura and Joe's mother, Rita. We ask that you would be with Jean LaPointe, Jason Gherkin, John, as we give thanksgiving for his recovery as he's recovering from major cancer surgery. Be with Karen's mother-in-law's sister, Betty. We ask that you would continue to be with Jeanette as she is undergoing treatments for cancer. Annette with her ongoing health issues. Gio as he recovers from knee surgery. Gail, Muriel, many other people. We ask that you would be with 14-year-old Jason who is going in for surgery this week. Continue to surround Corey, Zoe, baby Finley with your love. We pray for Galena and John and their twin children. We pray for Hadley Grace as she continues to follow up now in her home in Michigan uh, with her doctors there, little 11-month-old Hadley Grace. We thank you, Lord, for those who serve our communities, our first responders. We pray that you would protect them and watch over them. We thank you also for those who serve our nation, especially those in faraway places, potentially in harm's way. We ask that you would grant them success in their mission and that you would be with their families back home. And especially we remember Jeff. 
We pray for our nation and our communities during this election season. Watch over us, guide us, and direct us. We pray for those citizens of our nation who are hurting. We pray for those who long for justice. We pray that you would help us to maintain law and order. We pray for safety and security for all, that it would, they would experience in that a safety and security that ultimately comes from you. We ask, Lord, all of these things for Jesus' sake, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. so blessed that you worshiped with us today, that we gathered together in this way, not virtually, but in our own homes, for God is really here with us. We want to thank everyone for their prayers, their words of encouragement, your gifts, your offerings. All of those things help us corporately to be just what God has called us to be, the heart, the hands, the feet of Jesus, right here in the heart of Orlando. And as you live out being the heart, the hands, the feet of Jesus, wherever Jesus has put you, we would love to hear your stories. Simply send those to us. We would love to connect with you. And if there's anything that you would want us to be praying for, we simply invite you to, to let us know that so that we can be lifting you up in prayer. God's blessings on your week. <music>